It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Yo, man. Boom, it's Rusty. Boom, it's Rusty. I don't know if that's going to work. Boom, it's... I don't have my voice. My voice isn't quite there today. Um, so it's, it's, a less enthusiastic sounding boom. Anyhow, this welcome to the public access podcast, the podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And, uh, shout out to er the original podcast people. So, uh, that's a shout out to returning guests there. So anyhow, today it's Wednesday, uh, garbage day, as you may know it here in where i live i have a special guest because not because it's garbage day because it's an awesome day and every day is awesome if it's not awesome what, what the fuck change it to make it awesome you can make it awesome somehow so i'm gonna bring in my special guest i'm gonna bring in my special guest right here right now we have Chiara Letizia, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Who are you? Good. I'm doing really good. Just uh yeah, happy to be here and doing doing Me what too. I do. Yeah, thank you. Good. I'm glad. Me too. <laughs> That's awesome. And so where where are you in the world here? I'm in Milan, Italy. Milan, Italy. Okay. Yeah, Not a bad so deal. it's afternoon here. Okay. Um, how long you been there for? I'm, I'm actually, I'm born and raised Italian. So this is, yes, this is my homeland. Uh, and then I moved all over the world, uh, visited 43 countries so far, <laughs> actually, oh. and lived in the US and the UK, spent a long time in Japan as well. So what Okay, we'll get back to that here in a minute. What what landed you here, <laughs> or not here? What landed you back in uh in Milan? Uh, well, actually, the pandemic. I was living in London uh when the pandemic hit, and I was I was in Italy for for a radio interview actually, which never took place because it was when they shut down Italy. You know, like literally, uh, oh, it was like Italy was wild. Up. We were yeah, we were the first country you know to go through i remember talking to my friends in, in in the u.s and they were you know worried about us and and so i got stuck in a way in in italy of course you know my my family like my parents live here my brother you know close friends and family still live in italy and um during the pandemic i had time to think whether i wanted to come back to london you know and so sure. i just said like no I just want to stay in Italy a little bit longer and then all of a sudden I've been here <laughs> you know so okay so what like I don't know because I think it was like pretty much one of the first places that was on a lockdown and I remember seeing some stuff on the news and I mean yeah it was pretty wild I I was in a place where it was I don't know where I was living, it went to be a place that was, you know, sort of locked down to a place that was like barely nothing. And then if I drove 15 minutes south, uh, there was never anything that shut down the whole time uh, in Iowa, which was, mm -hmm. it's Iowa. So, which is, yeah, kind of middle of nowhere. But so, what what happened when you found out that you couldn't go anywhere what what was your what was your train of thought right there when you thought okay i'm here in italy what am i going to do how long is it going to be it, 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 yeah it was interesting 
I, I had time to think because, so, you know, you're yeah. in a house and I was lucky enough, you know, that my apartment is big enough. I have two balconies and I was living, you know, I was by myself, you know, not sharing like a house oh, with like nice. three, four people, you know, and yeah. also having, having like a balcony because the way that the lockdown worked in Italy, it was, we couldn't go, we could walk, run or whatever, uh, the, the, for, for a maximum of 200 meters, which, um, it's not much. It's like, not far. it's not, yeah, it's not far. It's like 20 steps from my home, you know? Yeah. So, and I remember Whoa. looking at my, I was, you know, walking around the, the building and my neighbor was like running. He's a runner around the building and the police was, you know, checking it. it, it it, it was bad. It was, but my first thought was, oh my gosh, I, I cannot go anywhere, you know, and I'm a huge traveler um, per se. And, and, and to me, it was like, I'm stuck. And I hated that feeling. And of course, worried because I mean, the, the TV, the news, it, the pay, paper, online paper, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and they were talking about how bad it was. And also I, started hearing from like my dad's friends they passed away so and you of course they are older yeah because because that's that will it no it was not pleasant at all i honestly um went into like a safe mode for a few days scared and because it's one thing if you decide not to go out of the house sometimes it's, it happens i don't feel like going out of the house for a couple of days huh. and sometimes right. it's healthy but it's one thing if you decide to do it. It's another thing if someone tells you you cannot do it. And also the idea that you can get sick from even like the, the, a neighbor, you know, and not seeing my family, my friends. I just have, you know, a little niece that was a few months old and not getting to see her other than, you know, FaceTime or whatever. Um, yeah. It, it was bad. And also because at first it, we thought it was, you know, China, Italy. Uh, but then, of course, when you see that it becomes what it was, like a, a pandemic, I, I don't know. I, I didn't have good thoughts. I, I honestly start, started having panic attacks sometimes at night. And so how did you work through that? Or what, what happened? Um, I couldn't work on my you know management I manage artists and you know live part is important like no live shows everything was canceled we don't know what's going to happen and and I was starting to hear from friends and, and colleagues and like well I have to close down my agency this was a few months in you know the lockdown yeah. close down my agency because especially booking agents, you know, they, they rely if they're not huge, you know, and they have like investments and funds from other sources and they had to close down or at least put it on a hold and, and go find, you know, a, another job in the meantime to support their families. And so I thought like, this cannot be me. <laughs> um, and, um, and so I've always believed in the potential of the digital, you know, I've been talking about live streaming and doing shows live stream since 2011 oh, because okay. yeah I don't don't ask me why because I I could say <laughs> you know I was on the forefront of a movement that and also remote working and believing that someday no I I don't know it was a thought I had and probably seen that more and more especially young people you know and also like even myself I'm, with the phone in my hands all the time, you know, healthy, unhealthy. Yeah. We could sit here and talk for hours about that, but <laughs> it's not healthy. It's needed. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Um, but in the end, I think, and I've never seen it as a substitute for live shows, but what I saw is that live streaming shows, it's going to become, and, and the meta, what it's called now, the metaverse, it's going to become something like as a different type of entertainment. Mm -hmm. um and so i i thought like why and i was reading an article actually on on billboard online saying that i don't recall if it was 16 percent on eight or 18 percent of the whole artists out there 
um, probably they were referring to the US, but it's a lot, you know, yeah. is female, you know, and it's not much. It's oh. very little, you know, if, especially if you consider that among those artists, J-Lo, you know, Miley Cyrus, Lady Gaga, you know, huge names. And yeah. so I was thinking, what's happening right now to, let's say, a singer that makes an income with live shows? Like a singer, maybe single mom, you know, trying to support their, her kids. Wow, she has no source of income. So I just started reading and going deeper into that. And I had this thought and 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 which occupied my mind, you know, from going crazy. But at the same time, what can I do to help? And I set up this online festival for women. It was called oh. Online Female Fest. Um and, and I did everything by myself, you know, in, in, in my apartment with my old laptop and my phone, because you couldn't go, everything was was shut down. So I couldn't go in and buy an extra laptop and, and go and, and buy some extra gear. Amazon, yeah, you could get something there, but shipment was so slow, at least here in Italy, because they couldn't, oh, yeah. we're talking about 2020, the beginning here in March, we were on lockdown. So you couldn't get know anything and so i was like I, I started contacting some some female artists and saying like what do you think and we do this for a charity to support a cause of women um it's called it's in the uk help musician and and they help in general they do this throughout the year not just for the pandemic but uh they help musicians um with some sort of trade union as well but they also help uh, and they were helping, giving money, you know, to um, to some artists that needed that. And like, what if we do something for women? You know, I'm a woman, and and I'm like in the minority in 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 the whole the music scene. And and so uh, I'm glad, you know, that a lot of artists said like, yes, you know, well, we want to do this. We want to do this 100 for charity. Mm -hmm. um, it's for a great cause. And so I managed somehow to put together seven artists from three continents. So Whoa. different times, different time zones <laughs> um, and set up a day, uh, four hours, four hour and a half, four and a half hours of live music, live streaming um, online. And I was the state manager, the founder, the marketing person, the organizer, the <laughs> press person, you know, um, it was challenging. I was nervous, but I set everything up in one month, which is not much wow. for this type of an event, you know, including for the promotion, festival. And I said, you know, what? yeah, for a festival. And I say, you know what, if it's going to go, it's going it, to, whatever happens, you know, you know, and I felt also that fans needed that, you know, so I was doing that to support women and support musicians, but, but I was also doing that, like, Hey, let's bring some levity to people on lockdown because in the meantime, because that was May, the U S I think I don't recall when the U S went on lockdown. Uh, it was, it was starting March, March or April. I think we went. Okay. Maybe? Yeah. So right after us. Yeah. Yeah. And so just bring some levity and, and, and something trivial, you know, in at people at home, you know, because uh, a lot of, especially people that suffer from depression already before the pandemic, that that hit pretty hard. Um, and I'm glad, you know, that that's exactly what what Online Female Fest did for for people and for artists. And I'm glad um, that, for instance, Cher Ross from like X Vixen, you know, the huge hard rock. Uh, band female band from the 80s she joined and she participated Lacey hmm. Sturm Lacey Sturm play and she you know two-time Grammy nominated Lacey Sturm uh, former Flyleaf um, joined plus an opera singer from Italy um, people in Japan and other artists in Japan and I'm, I'm so glad, you know, that they decided to join for a great cause and also coming from different musical backgrounds, you know, from rock metal to pop um, to opera, you know, yeah, very but that diverse was the whole, like, group yeah. of, of music 
Yeah, and that was the whole idea to bring together even types of music that maybe you would think like, okay, if I listen to opera, I don't listen to rock and metal. But in reality, there was, and I think there still is, you know, such a need for music, you know, and, and something like a universal language that it worked out. And actually some fans from like, you know, the heavy metal rock part became fans of the opera singer because like you can recognize talent, you know? And, yeah. and so that's, that's awesome. basically what I did to not go crazy. <laughs> and and I work, it worked, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So did you have any uh, any technical issues going through that? Um, I mean, because I assume with live streaming that much with that many people watching, uh, there had to have been some sort of issues yeah. that came up. So how did yeah. that work? Um, better than I expected, to be honest. So because that was my main thing, like Internet, Wi-Fi, uh, the main issue we were we had unfortunately with two Italian performers, but that was coming from their internet connection, I believe in the end, because um, we had to run some tests before, you know, to see if their Wi-Fi would support that type of show, you know, yeah. because even though they would go online and do like a small set, like 15 to 20 minutes set each, because especially when you go online and you live stream a show, it's not like, you know, being in front of a stage live, you can say there are two hours, you know, some artists do a three hour show, but then yeah. it's different. Of course, it's not, you're not in a room, you know? And also I would, in the live chat, I would encourage people between sets to like, go grab a glass of wine or go grab coffee. Or I was doing that. I, you know, I was doing that as, as well yeah. wow. while I was chatting on my phone. I was doing that on my laptop while I was chatting on the phone with the artist, which I put together in like, a group um a chat group and say like hey you're live in five minutes you're live in two minutes you're live and doing the countdown um yeah. wow but i but i think um and so when when we had issue with one artist and her wi-fi went down for a little bit and and the way the platform was the screen went blank i didn't have like a host you know i didn't have time to do all of that i mean uh and so the, the the screen went blank but then i would tell people like hey technical difficulties and everyone that the audience was very understanding of course they they all understood it was an unusual situation you know that was set yeah. up in like a month they were all very patient supportive yeah. and say like you know what they didn't get upset because that's the first thing you're like because they paid a ticket you know they yeah. did pay a ticket they went to charity of course but then like how, I was scared, like typing, like, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties that she's going to come back soon. And which that's what happened. Um, but then they were all very understanding. And that's amazing. The, the thing that amazed me is how much human beings can get together and understand one another when there's something of an issue that happens inside of a major issue which was the pandemic you know and it's one of those things that almost like you know what that gives me hope for mankind you know we can be kind and nice human beings if we want <laughs> and, yeah if we want if we want and you know especially that soon after uh after it started that you're going right for it and creating a festival that we're gonna have live in a month and you know yeah they're like there's a lot of uncertainty for a lot of people and you know a lot of us thought it was gonna be a lot shorter than it ended up being um but much longer yeah yeah it kept on going and going and so you know you didn't really have a chance to to stop and because I, I mean yeah i'm sure it was a lot of people who hadn't been able to do much and i've talked about this on on another one of my podcasts um about how a lot of people like if you go to a concert now for the most part 
I would say at least 25% of the people have their phones out and are recording. If 25 is a pretty conservative number too of that. It is. And it depends the type of artist that you, you're watching <laughs> and the yeah. type of audience. If it's a younger audience, it's like everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild. And like he, my friend was saying, it's uh, you'd rather uh, that a lot of the younger crowd would rather watch someone else open up presents than open up presents themselves. And so I think that being on the, you know, the live live streaming of a show was you know kind of going in that direction anyway so um and then so did you have anyone that was performing in a an interesting setting like were they were, was everyone on a stage or was someone in like a a kitchen or uh out um, in the yard um and not a, let me think no i mean um most artists had like a home studio okay. you know so but it was most of them actually all of them was acoustic so very oh. intimate because i mean also it uh, usually especially when you have a band like for instance like vixen uh, i spoke to their at that time bass player but of course, like we cannot get together because one person lives here, the other person lives there. You cannot get together, so it was unthinkable, you know, to do like a, a full electric set. It was acoustic, but then I think it was even better because it was so intimate, you know. Yeah. Either from a studio or no, there was no kitchen. No, one artist, she was in her kitchen, but you couldn't see the kitchen. So she was, you know, nice. She did a nice job with the camera and the lights. She had like a little lamp. You couldn't see the lamp, but you know, the great thing about artists, every type of artist is that they get creative, you know? Yep. Have and to. of course have to, yeah. You get creative with the lighting. You get creative. Like most of all of them, they had like a professional mic but the good the opera singer she sang without a mic but that's you know kind of what the opera um does in general um the sound was great uh regardless um yeah i'm thinking studios to they were all in some type of studio they even had like their backdrop you know from their the band slash artist um the something peculiar that I think they all did is <laughs> seriously having like a smile on their faces the whole time and being and I remember I'm getting goosebumps while I say this being extra grateful to be on a stage and to have the chance to perform because, you know, from like March to May, it's a couple of months. And especially if you're a touring musician, you miss it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, something that I said to all the artists before, you know, the show, a couple of days before the show, I said, you know what? I'm doing, I did everything I could. I, I'm doing things 100% professional. I know you will, but in the end, let's have fun. And I know it's not an ideal situation, all over the world but um that's we're not here if you want to think talk about covid talk about everything that you feel like talking you know there i don't want to put any the uh, artistic type of restraint to what you want to say what you want to sing but we're here to bring some levity to people so let's try and do that and and then see what happens and as long as we have fun doing what we're doing people are going to have fun and and that's what happened. And I remember the smile on their faces, which considering the time that we were living, um, yeah, and, and grateful. I remember I felt grateful. And I know because then we talked after the show with all the artists, they were grateful to be there, you know, and grateful to each person leaving a comment because also people were very active in the chat, you know? Oh, okay. That's helpful too. Yeah, because there, yeah, there was a chat and um, I mean, there's people 
most people stay there for like four hours, four and a half hours, you know, it's a lot when you're alone. <laughs> and then, yeah. Um, and so, different musical genre, but it's, it's part of the amazingness of it. So did, what was kind of the aftermath of that? What, how did, what happened afterwards? Were people messaging you, asking you what's next or? Yes. Yes. And, and saying like next year, you got to do it live, you know, on a stage and like, well, okay. It, it's a, <laughs> it's a, an ambitious plan which is something that I'm, I'm still like why not you know but it's one thing to bring people from different continents together live streaming it's a different thing to fly them over so you need a different type of budget for sure but then they ask for year two you know of online female fest and that's what happened you know in 2021 we did another online female fest in 2021 different artists most of them had an electric set oh. this time even though i would still like to keep it acoustic because yeah. i think part of the online female fast which is always going to be online female fast you know um is the idea of doing it in acoustic intimate setting because that's how it was born in a way so i think for 2021 it was fine to do it that way you know but I think 2022, I didn't do it because also, uh, honestly, I was swamped with more work for management because, you know, you start working again. <laughs> and so, yeah, the, the point of it was to take up time while you weren't managing. So, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I felt like I'm, I'm, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do for people, people that are expecting. And they were messaging me like, where's 2022? Like, you know what, guys, let me just pause for a second. I need. I need it for my mental health. Um, and then let's create a kick ass 2023 edition, you know, and that's what I, what I plan for winter this year. Oh, okay. So it's going to be in the winter. Um, yes. And it's yeah. Winter, because it's, um, things have changed. Luckily now, you know, people go out and, and I don't think doing something in May or June, uh, I don't want to keep people in. I mean, you, you can yeah. live stream from anywhere, but still. Yeah, you don't, like in the winter, people are going to be inside anyway. They're not going to yeah. be outside at the beach or wherever, yeah. you know, out in the woods or uh, whatever yeah. they're doing in the winter. Yeah, there's a much better chance of them being home and having those, you know, same sorts of feelings that they had during the, during the lockdown and uh, that, you know, I like yeah. to and also it's people, more intimate. But... Winter, at least in in our atmosphere, you know, when it's winter in our atmosphere, you you feel the need of like I don't know, like a hot cup of cocoa or a tea, yeah. and and cuddle up and and listen and watch a, a live stream show. You know, maybe not for four hours, and you know you can come and go and log back in. Um, but it sounds at least to me more intimate and something that people could appreciate more, you know? So, yeah. and, and the idea is always to do something that people are going to love. Are you going to stick with the four hour format? I, okay. I'm a very ambitious person. I want to yeah. do like 10 hours, you know? Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm lining up some names. Um, uh, this is a, I'm basically starting now, you know, for December. Um, because now I feel that I need more time. Uh yeah, we're not in a pandemic, month. you know. And also I wanna step up my game and 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 do something and also have people that collab on on, you know, with a press team and do things differently. Um but yeah, and and but it always has to be for charity, it all and 2021 and this year as well i i want that to be for mental health because for me it's a huge it, it's enormously important um and i don't think mental health is is taken into that much of a consideration these days still you know um and there's still a lot of stigma around mental health you 
if you have a mental health issue, then you're crazy. And if you break a leg or a knee or something, then it's okay. It's, it's unfortunate both ways, you know, and, and uh, I think there's a lot that can be done, you know, to break this stigma and, um, that, that that's kind of something that is very close to me as a cause and 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 I know it's close to a lot of musicians and artists in general because a lot of artists have mental health issues uh, I don't yeah. want to go into why or what what not that that's the way it is you know yeah. hey, there is uh more than that 25 percent uh of yeah people who are artists have mental health uh anything you know and yeah again 25 is probably a pretty conservative number and oh yeah and especially like you were saying with people who aren't able to go out and perform live or you know with something like that too because that high that you get from performing live in front of a crowd and then just one day not having that but always wanting to chase after that still and having no clue how to get to it again yeah yeah and also and also i believe the music business is that one business and maybe well same with the actors business the arts business is one of those businesses where you are considered uh, accomplished you know if you are famous, if you are in that 1%, you know, Lady Gaga, <laughs> you name it. In yeah. that case, you're successful because you make a ton of money. But what are the type of business do we think? I mean, do we think the same way for uh, an attorney or uh, I don't know, a plumber, you know, any other business? You are successful if you make a living out of your craft. Yeah. You are, and, 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 or if you're happy doing what you do, you know, to me, that is success. Um, but in the arts, it's always like, are you famous? You know, there's always that question or like, yeah. are, you on do TV? You do? are you on TV? And, and you're only famous if you're on TV and in that type of, you know, the prime time and et cetera. And I think, it's uh, it's stressful for musicians, and it's something that I tell the artists that I represent. Like, don't think. I mean, we all want to get to the one percent. I mean, who who does sure. <laughs> in any yeah, type of business, you know? But a lawyer, uh, an attorney, is successful even if he's not in that one percent of being super wealthy. He's successful, you know. He wins his in court and ups and downs like every other job and. But in music, you you always have that pressure of being in that top, and everyone's everyone wants to be there, which is stressful because it's it's called one percent for a reason, you know, because it's yeah. not everyone can go there, and maybe it has not nothing to do with talent. It has to do with circumstances. It it's a it's a lot, you know, but doesn't make an artist less less successful if they're not seriously like Madonna or you, you name it. And I mean, how much of like most artists I know that are not that 1%, but maybe like <laughs> top, you know, again, 25% maybe or so, most of what they're making their money off of is merch. I mean... It seems like that's what's really driving them. A lot of them are just living off yeah. like it. Yeah, like the yeah. a lot of people and I even, know. And yeah. And now online, wrestling. you know, sponsorships online and, and mm-hmm. uh, what's called influencer, which has a, a derogative still connotation of, sure. of some sort, which I don't think it should be because it's part of the arts in general, especially these days, you know, online um and and also i mean it, with merch uh, you're actually reminding me of an article that uh, i read yesterday two days ago i don't recall um an artist a singer from in flames i hope i'm not mistaken um actually spoke about they're a swedish 
um, metal band, they, he spoke about um, the fact that a lot of venues want to cut out of the artist merch. Oh. You know, they want from 20 to 25%. It's a lot. Wow. Yeah, and that's, that's before a- VIT. Um, so in the end, because the artist has to deal with all of that and the artist has, the, the, has to bear the cost of printing, you know, the, the merch, whether yeah. they're t-shirts or the artist is left with 30% net, you know, um, of, uh, because this has to go there. This has to go. Everyone takes a cut, even from merch. And so, and I'm glad that artists are talking more and more about this because I think a lot of fans don't know. You know, and I think fans, when they think when they buy merch, for instance, that is going to the artist, um, things are changing because even like fans are getting more, thanks to social media, they're getting more and more educated how the mechanism goes. And I think more and more artists are being independent, like through Patreon, for instance, you know, and, and stuff like that. And like, once you sign up to, I have a Patreon, for instance, once you sign up to Patreon, you know, you're 100% supporting the artists and their team you know, but at least, you know, you're supporting the artist. There's no cut taken from anyone else, you know, other than Patreon for their processing fees, which of course it makes sense, you know, they're providing you for, with a platform. And sometimes they, I don't know if, I don't think they fulfill your merch for you, but there there are ways it's, it's becoming like a super integrated platform. Uh, I'm not getting paid by Patreon to say that, by the way. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Not sponsored. After this, after this episode, you will be. <laughs> not sponsored. Uh, no ad. Um, no, but seriously, I think um, I think we need you. We we need to make more and more people aware of how the system works. Which sometimes I understand. You know, there's a lot of people that need to be fed <laughs> and need to make yeah. an end. Inter- income out of one artist band whatever at the same time it's becoming less and less sustainable for an artist to tour for instance because of well for instance like gas prices here in europe i know they they got higher in the u.s as well i was in new york in last may like a year ago and i'm coming back to the u.s in september uh, and i talk to my friends i know gas prices have gone up but here in europe yeah. and it, it's crazy i mean yeah, it, with, with I, what's happening unfortunately with the war and everything and the power prices gas prices it, it it's really crazy and so it becomes less and less sustainable for a band especially coming you know from the u.s to come and tour in europe because then here everything is definitely more expensive um from renting a tour bus prices have gone up um even for like if you want to rent a van i was looking and i was looking to rent a van for myself in iceland because that's my 44th country that i would like to go Uh to yeah i think i'm gonna wait out (laughs) wait it out for a little bit prices are crazy yeah i saw how like iceland itself is so expensive for everything yeah, I, but, i've been it was, looking there because i hot springs oh yeah that's so yeah i'm gonna wait it out a little bit longer but you know you go there and like maybe i rent like a van to you know go around and and but then it's uh it's crazy expensive compared to what it was pre-pandemic flights and everything is more expensive so all of that has an impact even on artists themselves, you know, and, and they have to take that into consideration. Um, I remember there was a band supporting uh, another band in Europe and they had to, um, uh, they're from the US and, and they had to say like, you know what, we did like the first leg of the European tour, we're going back home because it's not sustainable anymore. And they're a band in that 25%, you know, maybe, okay, in the 30%, yeah. <laughs> you know, so they, they make a living out of their music, they're known. <clears throat> and so um, uh, it's interesting, let's say, because I, I want to see, oh, I always want to see the positive out of 
even the worst situation. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes for artists and how artists can be become even more creative in finding how to make that work. Yeah, because you don't want to go out and do shows where you're losing money. I mean, nobody, I mean, some people will do that because- Yeah, you can do that as an investment. But yeah, I mean, if you're losing money when you're going out on tours, I mean, what's, I don't know, is that really worth it in the the long run for yourself? And like you were saying, like the online festival, like there's no, there's no venue you have to pay. There's no travel costs you have to pay. There's, I mean, it's, and plus, I mean, so like with, with my business, I mean, people can sit at home, they can sit in their favorite chair on their couch, they can lay lay down in bed and see a concert, you can Mm -hmm. like, lay back, put a, put a blanket on, uh, you know, sit back and, uh, you know, I I don't know, you can, and you like, I don't know, you can't do a lot of concerts where you can just sit there in your underwear and uh, and watch a show and like, OK, this is yeah. great. like, yeah, you can just I think it's going to be something that's more. You know, uh, makes a lot more sense for a lot more people to be able to do it. and then, you know, getting to see. Bands that might not be as big, you know, uh that could uh never have a chance to come to your country because there's no way no one can pay for it like yes. you can see yes you can see that this as band well. now right at right in your in your room in your in your house uh wherever you're yes. gonna watch yeah yeah so of course it's definitely more sustainable you don't have the same feeling of a live show because we gotta be realistic you know, yep. even though people, I saw people with online female fest, they got excited, you know, in comments like, whoa, I love this. I'm getting, it's not the same thing, you know? And, and <laughs> in the chat, I was saying like, hey, raise your hands now, you know, give it up for this <laughs> artist. There's some, a different way of communication, even for artists through the camera, you know, you have a, it's, it's almost like a TV show, yeah. you know? But you're not lip syncing. <laughs> That's live. Um, but then, of course, the atmosphere of a live show. So I don't want to say that it's nothing compares the experience of even going to a live show. But it's definitely becoming less sustainable, at least for now. And hopefully, I mean, this whole situation is going to end soon with, with war, you know, and... and mm, oh. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's um, it, it's a lot. And, and uh, I know in the U.S. people don't talk a lot about what's happening, you know, in Europe with war. Um, but here we, it's close by. It's like from Italy, it's two hours flight Whoa. from where I live. So you have a different different perspective from over here. Like it's always in the news. It's close, you know. Yeah. It's it's geographically close, um, and then we have a big Ukraine Ukrainian community in Italy. For instance, I'm talking about Italy because I'm in Italy right now. Um, and you definitely, after the pandemic, we definitely feel, you know, even the what's happening, you know, and and it, it, of course it's it's affecting us financially but also emotionally because also we went from like pandemic to something like this to war and and um i'm not the type of person that says it's not a great time for the world because there's never a good time you know if you look at things maybe things are better in our side of the world like let's say the western world but there's always going to be some type of war or something going in other yeah. parts of the world it's human nature, unfortunately. But then, um, so there's always something happening. But at the same time, I think people now, also thanks to social media, are more and more aware of what's happening. You know, you can get you can get false information as well, but you can also get info, some type of info of knowing, like, hey, you know, this is happening. Maybe I'm here, and it's not 
affecting me as much, but there is people that are deeply affected by this. And, and it should gives us a sense of togetherness, you know, and that we're, especially now with globalization, we're a part of a whole, you know, everything affects us in, in some way, you know, we cannot just think like, this is not my concern. Yeah, and I think that became a lot more uh, evident that, you know, everything in every part of the world has a direct effect on everybody else and a lot more community throughout the world. And, you know, being able to do stuff like this, like, I don't know, I wouldn't, I would have had a much harder time trying to, you know, have you, you know, come out to, uh come out to the states and uh come do a interview with me here i can just you know yeah. talk to you here and it makes it a lot easier it makes everything not not too bad and it gives us a you know different perspective on how we're both affected but you know how we're both here and both getting to yes you can live. there's always a solution you know yeah because I'm, I'm uh, always trying to see opportunities, even in different times and different places. And there's always an opportunity or a, a way of doing things, you know, as you said, like, okay, we cannot do this in person, but we can do this uh, remotely, you know, and yeah. today we have the tools to do that. Yeah, and I think it's only going to get better and and more accessible for everyone. Um, you know, even people who might not have this technology at the moment, uh, I think it'll be more accessible to more people, and then get some more more people to check you out uh, all over the world. And if people are going to check you out all over the world, where are they going to go to check you out all over the world? I have every type of social media, <laughs> but the mm. ones that I use more is Instagram. They can find me Instagram.com slash Chiara Letizia. Uh, and same on Facebook, Chiara Letizia. And it's spelled, uh, I'm not going to do the spelling. I, I, will, <laughs> I will put it in there. It'll be in the show notes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and also I have a website. It's Chiara-Letizia.com. Uh, um Excellent. and um yeah and there's info there there's my book a book that i wrote for musicians starting out it's called never give up the real secrets of the music industry um always with my super a- super positive message you know <laughs> I'm, I'm not a huge like an advocate of like always be positive but i guess unwillingly i am <laughs> that's all right that's all right and so is that book on uh, amazon or something it's or? on amazon yeah it's available for kindle so uh the, the digital version and also as a paperback so awesome. um yes it's on amazon never give up the real secrets of the music industry by Kiara Letizia. awesome all right well hey Kiara, uh it was awesome getting to meet you i really appreciate you coming likewise on. Yeah, again, like uh, wasn't thanks so much for giving yeah. me this space. You're welcome. Just to be able to hit record and we go. Who knows what's going to happen? And we get to talk for a while. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy we got to meet. And hopefully, a lot of people can hear what your story is or how you know how you are when you're talking. And that's I think <laughs> what's I think that's what's important that gets overlooked a lot of times. Just you know what they're like just to talk to and yeah uh, it's been a nice time talking with you so i appreciate that yeah thanks so much thank you you're very welcome have a good rest of your day you too bye all right bye all right and that is chiara letizia i said that one right um yeah yeah she was cool i liked her and Again, uh, this show is on the Quantum Global Broadcasting Network. Check it out. Check out past episodes. There's 371 before this. And you can go look at other shows on this network. And you guys, follow her. Check her out. She's got so much stuff to look at. So 
go do that. Buy her book. Why wouldn't you? It's easy to find. You can get the book or you can just look it out on your phone. You can get a Kindle and Kindle aid it, as the kids say. They don't say Kindle aid, but I'm going to say they say Kindle aid. But you guys, that is the show. Man. Boom. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Ernest! 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 <coughs> yes, Pee-wee. You brought the snacks, right? <laughs>